I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam podcast. Joining me is Coleman Hodges, Swim Swam Head of Production. And today, we have the most celebrated female Olympian of all time, Jenny Thompson. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> But you're supposed to come in with the big, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks yeah, for so, coming. <laughs> um, so, okay, Jenny's in scrubs. Jenny's an anesthesiologist. When I, when I think about you, I think about, you know, a lot of Olympians will, like, they, 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 they win their medals, and then they, they hawk those medals, and they, they create businesses <laughs> and swimming. Some you saying, <laughs> some, 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 some people some people change their name to gold medal so that nobody will forget they want a gold medal <laughs> shamelessly. Um, but it's it's a uh, you know it's an honor to have you on just just so we can say in terms of metrics there there you have twelve Olympic medals the your uh, Dara Torres has twelve uh, Natalie has twelve but you have eight gold medals and Ooh. you are the sixty second the greatest female athlete of all time, and I'll call BS on that. I think if we slid yeah, your career. Yeah, me too, honestly. Yeah. If we slid your career. Not, I mean, who's ever happy with 60 second? Uh, not me. <laughs> I, 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 I just don't, I don't buy it. I think if we slid your career forward in, you know, a little bit into the modern era, I think that we would be, um, I think that, that, I think that it wouldn't be 60 second. I'd be, I'd be somewhere around top 15 because it's a stunning achievement. Um, do, Thank you. When I, when I think about you, I think about Eric Hyden, who was such a huge star in the Winter Games and then went on to become a, a doctor. Um, have you ever given yourself a break? <laughs> uh, no, I, that's uh, probably one of my downfalls. <laughs> I can't relax very well. Um, well, I, I, oh, I'm in my office. That's my office mate, Dr. Hansen. Hi, Hi. Dr. Hansen. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Um, no, I don't take breaks very easily. No, I, I didn't think so. So I, I, I want to say bye, Dr. Hansen. She's leaving now. Bye. So off, off the top of the show, we want to say this. Um, so you and I were on the Olympic team together in 92. And if you're, if you're a 92 Olympian and you're the group Olympians who, who were jealous of people who won medals and were on Team USA, and you just like, you just, you're like, you're watching Jenny Thompson going, man, she keeps winning medals. And I'm just sitting here on the couch doing nothing. I just want to say that I'm in that group, and I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, no. So it, let's, 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 let's work through it. Let's work through it. I, I'd like to get back to 92, and I, and I don't want to be negative, but I, you're, you are a grown woman, and you can talk about this. 92, there should be an asterisk. Um, I was on that team. There was a lot of drama on that team. And frankly, uh, you were coming into that, and it's like you were one of the most celebrated swimmers since Shirley Babishoff coming into that Olympic Games. And um, they only drug tested swimmers randomly, second and fourth. They weren't blood testing. They were only doing urine tests. And um, coming into that Olympics, the ex expectations, your first one was that it was going to be a lot of gold medals. And mm. to put into context, on the team internally, a lot of people were upset. And, and true to the concern, within months, nine of the Chinese national team members tested positive right. for steroids. Uh, yeah. How did so? My, there's a question in this. How did you <laughs> process that, and how did yeah. you handle that? That seems so unjust. So unjust. Um. So yeah, going into the '92 games, I had the world record in the hundred freestyle, which I set at the trials. Um, so I was p feeling pretty on top of my game. Um, and really, if you were looking at the um, world rankings, it's it, it would be too much of a problem for me to, if I did the same sort of performance to win the gold medal at the games. Um, and then the Chinese just came out of nowhere. Um, and this, you know, I'm very pretty young, 19. Um, I'd never been to the Olympics before. Uh, this all the media and everything is new to me. Um, and then, so immediately after, so I won the silver medal. Um, had I tied my best time in the finals, I would have won. 
So, you know, it was very mixed. Um, like, where the heck did she come from? Um, but also, you know, I didn't have my best race ever. Um, and then I got drug tested and she did not. So that was very frustrating. Um, I think I even said to the media, you know, why is the gold medalist in the Olympic games not getting tested? This is ridiculous. You know, the winner takes all for endorsements and all sorts of things. Um, so the gold medal should be tested. So, um, I don't know if, how that was perceived, you know, it's hard to know what media is happening right in the moment. Um, you know, I only was just speaking very honestly and earnestly because, um, that, you know, that's, that's who I try to be. Um, and, um, but at the same time, very proud that I won a silver medal at the Olympic games. Um, that's a huge achievement, but in the context, it was, it was disappointing. It, it, um, it, did, it didn't slow you down. And I, I, it, I can it hear. Was hard. I have to say as a, as a kid growing up swimming, I would always really frown upon uh, other girls who cried after races. You know, this is an opportunity to, to improve, figure out what could, could I do better next time. But like really this was the first sobbing in the warm down pool moment um that i'd had um and so i also had like four more races i'm not sure exactly how many but i had relays i had the 50 free and the 200 free and um so i really had to you know pick myself up by my bootstraps and that was um you know i did it but it kind of you know it was hard to recover from that it's a um I, I mean, I was there. I was among, and I, I, we yeah. circulated with media. We knew, we knew all the reporters, a lot of the reporters that were reporting back then, some are still reporting today. They're like yeah. the historians of our sport. Right. Everybody had lived through 76 or had some sort of an understanding of 76 from the East Germans uh, in that moment. We know they were all cheating. So uh, it wasn't negatively received, but it was sort of a, it, it, it felt, it was a gut punch. And yes. um, but it didn't slow you down. You, you hit the ground running and you were a part of the most storied collegiate program in history. Not just aside from your Olympic accolades, greatest female Olympian of all time in swimming. It's a, yeah. it, it, you, you went on and you guys, you swam for Stanford. You swept four years and yes. uh, you guys won the team title. You won 19 NC2A titles. Um, did, did swimming at Stanford, uh, was that a healing process? Did that kind of bring you back to love for the sport? What was the transition? I, I never stopped loving the sport until the day I, you know, I still love it after I retired. But um, I think that um, Richard Quick, my coach um, and my teammates, you know, we, we were the type of people who never rested on our laurels or let setbacks affect us. Um, you know, I think that we were, um, we, just use it as a learning experience, you know, even though it was really painful um, to, to improve and to keep going. And, um, you know, I loved swimming at Stanford. All of the women I swam with were super motivated, of course, and winning um, the NCAAs was our number one priority um, as a team. And we helped each other get better every day. Um, you know, I swam with Lee Loveless Mauer now, um, Summer Sanders, um, just, so many incredible swimmers um and um and it was it that was the best experience in my swimming career it was swimming for stanford and and for richard quick um and daily day in and day out swimming with those incredible women um so they always helped me love the sport but i always just loved it on my own anyway <laughs> what did you study undergrad I studied, uh, it was called HumBio at Stanford, like human biology, and uh, I had a, we had to choose like an emphasis. Mine was women's issues and health. Um, I didn't really choose the medical path until I was a senior and did a post-bac pre-med program um, at Mills College in Oakland while I still trained with Richard. So this is, it wasn't like you grew up going, I'm going to be a doctor one day. No, it's, not uh, at all. Not at all. No doctors in my family. Uh, my mom, who's uh, my mom, Margaret, who's passed away, but she, today's her birthday, actually. So thinking about her a lot today. 
um, she was a medical technology. She worked in the lab. And so that was my really my only experience or, you know, family experience with medicine or anything. So I really, um, you know, I loved health and wellness and was kind of thinking more um, holistic kind of Eastern medicine. But then uh, when I was a senior at Stanford, I had a, a professor who, you know, basically encouraged me saying you'd be a great doctor, you, you know, your personality would make suit you for the profession. And he was really the one who encouraged me to, to, to go for it. So I have to give him credit. So I mean, just, 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 just as an aside, I mean, swimming's hard. Swimming's challenging. It, it's a, you, yeah. you commit so much time to it. Uh, any kids are out there and they're listening. It's like, you, 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 it's a, if you can commit to the sport of swimming, you're, you're, you're becoming disciplined in ways that the rest of the world is not. I think it makes you a superhero. How does that compare to going to medical school? Is there, you know, is it, what's harder? Is it, is it the same? Is it, how's it different? Yeah, the, yeah, the mental approach isn't too different. A lot of hard work, um, and yeah, a lot of hard work. <laughs> Being patient. Uh, medicine is sort of like, well, when you're you know at an elite level of swimming, the four every four years of the Olympics or World Championships or whatever, and in medicine it's every you know four years of medical school, four years of residency, give or take. Um, so you know I like that four year incremental plan. Um, so that worked well for me. Transitioning was difficult because I was going from being, you know, top, top of my game in, in, in one career and then to become a medical student where you're, you know, bottom of the barrel and everybody kind of picks on you <laughs> in the hospital. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, it's, what, it's so 96 to 2000 was, uh, so you graduated Stanford 96, correct? Yes. No. So yeah. graduated in 96, 96 to 2000 was a pretty stunning period of time. Um, yeah. I, I don't know how you feel about Atlanta. Atlanta was a, uh, was an unusual Olympics, but it's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, but you're from, from 96, I mean that you, three world record, three world championships, three world, uh, you know, world championship gold medals and hundred meter freestyle. You were very, very dominant in that period of time. Yeah. And in, for our audience, it's like, we're looking at like, how, who's bringing it year after year after year. And yeah. you were post, that was it. You were a professional at a time when there weren't a lot of pros. You were yeah. definitely in the infancy of it. What was yeah. the lifestyle like, you know, 96 to 2000, mm-hmm. uh, being a pro and like supporting yourself? Yeah, it was great. I loved it. I feel I'm so, um, I was so privilege to be able to, to um, do what I love and be supported by endorsements with Speedo, um, Hammer Strength. I mean, I had some smaller ones. Speedo, obviously my biggest um, supporter and endorser, but um, it was it was great. You know, I, I was doing my pre-med, so I was pretty busy, but um, to work out in the morning, go out to breakfast, <laughs> take a nap, um, you know, I had my studies, so there wasn't always like that, but um, I love being a professional swimmer. That was a really great time. That was, it was fun. I was doing a lot of traveling. I was um, swimming in the European circuit for money and um, was able to do some different things. Um, trained in Australia a couple of years with their, with um, Gennady Tresky and um, Alexander Popovs and Michael Klim's coach. So it was, it was um, how I kept things fresh. I was able to do some different things because I had more time for it. Okay. This podcast is all about you. It's all about you. But tell me, what's Sasha like? Alexander oh. Popov. Oh, Sasha. Yeah, we're not on Sasha <laughs> level, but um, he's a uh, he's like you know he's very serious. Um, he's a he when I at that time you know this is now ages ago, um, but when I was uh, training there at the at their sports center, you know I, I went over his house, which is cool. Um, I got to meet his wife, and he had a, a young child at that time. He was a family guy. Uh, very close with Gennady, um, but always, you know, very serious. Um, not a lot of goofing off with Alex Popov. <laughs> He's the Russian, Russian star, <laughs> the Russian sprint star. He finally broke Tom Jager's world record in the 50 free that had lasted 12 years in 2000. But I just remember when I think of him, he, he's somebody, his career fa- falls over a lot about a lot of our peers' careers. But he was, I, I, he used to be so upset about the U.S. media because he would say, 
movie stars. I don't understand why are they we are not more famous because we are real and they are fake. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Australia, he had a good chance of being more of a movie star because that's how they feel about swimmers there, which is kind of uh, cool. It's cool. So how many years were you uh, working on your getting your, your pre-med during that, that, that quad, uh, 96 to 2000? Uh, uh, two years. Two years. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, so I, think I was done with that by maybe 98. Yeah. And uh, 2000, was it felt like a Special Olympics in Sydney. It was, uh, and a lot of historic things happened, but it's a, um, you know, what, what was 2000 like? Because that was, that was an Olympics where you, you had to be thinking, is this my last Olympics? Right. Yeah. I so was. what I was, was your head? Where was your head? Oh, my head was in, uh, maybe not, I don't know. It was, it was a complicated time. Um, there was a lot of drama. Um, you know, it was my third Olympics and uh, I think I was ready for just peace in my, in my, uh, mental space. <laughs> so I, um, everyone always asks me, what's your favorite Olympics? It's hard to say because they're all so different, but, um, that Sydney was especially cool because swimming is just so popular in Australia and all of the swimmers are like rock stars and the atmosphere at the pool was incredible. Um, just packed to the to the brim um with so much energy so um that made it a lot of fun but um you know i think i was re definitely ready to um to retire after 2000 just because i was kind of mentally drained by everything and um but then as we know i went to 2004 so there's <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second <laughs> but after 2000 you, you you went to med school columbia yeah. So I started, I, um, so, you know, the games are in August. I, I deferred a year. So I, um, I, I, uh, took time off, spent time with my family. Uh, I lived in New Hampshire, um, had, had just a great, you know, casual lifestyle. I wasn't working. I wasn't doing school. I was just kind of hanging out. Um, and then I started med school in 2001. Um, well, I I whoa, 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 we, we got to stop right there. Yeah, we got to back I, up. We got, we got to stop right there. We have to, what, wait, what? We have to back up because I messed up my history. Oh, Sorry. Oh, um, yeah, fix your history. Go ahead. Yeah, I got to fix my history. <laughs> back up. Um, it was relaxing for like a couple months. I'll say that after Sydney. And then uh, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Um, I remember, in, that's right. It was December of 2000. I was actually living in Australia. I went back after Sydney. I went back because I loved it so much just to live there for a little bit. And, um, and I found out while I was there. So mm. after that, I spent a lot of time with my mom, helping her go to appointments, get her chemotherapy, all of those things. Um, and did that until I started medical school. Yeah, I was gonna back up and be like, okay, Jenny Thompson gets a break. What does the break look like? Because swimmers love breaks, and and it's uh, so it sounds like it was uh, a a short break, but uh, I was yeah, like, well, what? Speaking yeah. of retirement, because I didn't, I hadn't planned on going back at that point. I was like, okay, I'm on to my new thing. I'm going to, you know, I'm when Sydney ended, and before my mom was diagnosed with cancer, um, you know, I was just ready to chillax and then start med school. That was, I was like, okay, um. I'm all, I'm all set. This was great. I loved everything about my career, but I'm ready to move on. You dove into med school. Um, and uh, so what, what did I asked you before what that experience was like. Did you have any fear or did you just go into it like I'm bulletproof? I got this. I'm so ready for any challenge. <laughs> um, I, was, I was ready for the challenge. I was looking, you know, I always love challenges. So you know, I was ready for a full blown new one. And uh, it certainly provided that there was many times it was really hard for me. Um, I thought about quitting. After two and a half years into it, I'm like, okay, I'm paying this out of pocket. And I'm already halfway done. So I might as well just get the degree. Um, but you know, I, I really fell in love with the field I chose. Uh, anesthesiology, it has been really rewarding and fulfilling and I couldn't be happier now so i'm really glad that i pushed myself to to keep going even you, though yeah. you know things 
during the middle of it, I think, you know, overlay, you know, was my mom was sick and died mm. while I was in medical school. So there was a lot of pain and, and, um, questioning things. Um, but I'm, I'm glad that I finished it through. Uh, my dad died in 90, December of 96. And it, uh, it felt like a dividing line in my life. Mm -hmm. I think I was depressed for years and years and years. It took years and yeah. years and years before I would go a day where I didn't think about him three or four times. Yeah. But uh, is that, is, did that have anything, did that, did that change you? I mean, did, when did you change your mind and go, you know what, I'm going to go to, I'm going to, I'm going to compete in 2004. What was the, what was the catalyst for that? Yeah. So, um, so, so I started medical school. Uh, my mom was um, in New Hampshire and, um, getting treatments and everything was, she was doing well. Um, and I just decided the year after, or the summer after my first year of medical school, I was going to go home, live with her, just get a, you know, a, not a medical related job in, in town and just um, spend a lot of time with her. And, um, you know, Mike Parado and Seacoast Swimming Association near and dear to my heart, you know, um, I love Mike. And so spending time with him and the team is like, so cathartic and th therapeutic for me and then you know he's like why don't you get in swim and so you know that was also cathartic and, and um it, you know swimming is like my religion so spending time in the pool like helped me deal with stress um and then before i knew it i was you know going to meets with them and competing and then i went to nationals with them and won and then by winning nationals, I qualified for like A, B, and C, I think Pan Packs and um, World Championships, maybe even. And so um, it just was like a snowball. And I think my mom always got so much pleasure and, and so much, you know, joy out of watching me swim. But it, part of it was that she got excited about it too. And that, you know, it felt, I felt like I was able to give her some joy and something to look forward to through my swimming while she was dealing with such a struggle yeah it's a uh 2004 was that was a historic olympics you're 31 you're the oldest female were you the oldest swimmer <laughs> you're the oldest female swimmer ever at in, in, from the united states correct um in 2004 no you were the oldest you were the oldest on the team for sure oh yeah it's um, uh mm -hmm. i i'm not sure i don't i mean i think dara's Torres is older at the other games. The 2000? After, after that. No, yeah, 2000, yeah, but that was before. We're not at 2008 oh, yet. That she yeah, doesn't yeah. even matter. Dara, are you, Dara, are you listening? <laughs> you don't even matter now. We're in 2004. Okay. The, the, uh, no, but it's a historic moment. It's also, yeah, it's the birth of Phelps. Did, did you like pull Phelps aside and go, hey, I got a lot of medals. This is how you do it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, here's the, this is the, here's the, here are the cliff notes. You got them right here. Did, did you have that conversation? No, I'm not. I wasn't really too competitive about how many medals I had. <laughs> oh, my God. I it's not about the medals, no. It's all about the medals. It's when we were talking to Jenny Thompson. <laughs> it's all about the medals. Eight gold, 12 total. It's, it was, all right. It, it's, it's a, uh, so 2000 was more fun. Athens looked like it kind of was uncomfortable. It looked hot. and like Uncomfortable? A, yeah, it just, it didn't, like, I, I remember, and like, you know, the Olympics, when we travel on a national team, national team travel in between the Olympics can be very comfortable, and it's kind of easy, and then you go to the Olympics, and I always feel like Olympics is sort of a, the Olympics is, is, is harder, the Olympic Village, it just seems yeah, like it's, it's, it's not as comfortable. It. It's not as comfortable, it's more, the accommodations usually are not soundproof, roommates. It's, it's fun and interesting, but it makes it hard for on different levels. Do, do you have a favorite national team trip? Ooh. Um, yeah, I do. So, um, <laughs> can you share, can you share publicly why it was your favorite national team trip? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, um, but I have trouble remembering what year it was. When was, when was the uh, world championships in Perth? 91, 91. 98. Oh, was, but it was again in 98. That's right. It was in Perth yeah, in 91. It was in Perth yeah. January 91. It was in, in 98. That's correct. 98. 98 World Championships was my favorite because 
I was just in a really good place. Um, my mom was able to come and I roomed with Lee Loveless, who's like my, one of my best friends and she was, you know, made of honor in my wedding. Um, we're so close, like soulmates. And so we were rooming together and she was on the top of her game. I was on top of my, we were, you know, I, I, um, won a few events there. She won also. It was just, I love Perth. I always loved Australia, but Perth is just, it reminded me at that time of like California, how you would imagine California in the fifties or something, just very laid back, super chill, like surfing. And, uh, it was just very relaxing. We stayed in a nice hotel. The U S team did and Fremantle, I think it was in. It's and, awesome. uh, yeah, it, it was just, I don't know. It was just like the best, I was in my best mental place there. Just, it just, uh, I loved it. I, I never had a hamburger with an avocado on it until, <laughs> until I traveled to, to the opposite end of the world, the bottom of the world, Perth, Australia. Uh, just, was, was that your experience that you had avocado <laughs> on a hamburger before you had gone to Perth? I don't remember having an avocado on my hamburger there. Uh, no, I don't remember that. But it, but um, I remember eating. Um, what's what's the oh pavlova? Did you try that? What is that? The bug? It's this like fluffy, sugary dessert. That's that they have. <laughs> I haven't had, I, like I haven't that. had a carb since 1989. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's, it sounds good. It sounds good. Do you, okay. It, it's, it, well, we have to, I mean, with, with all this experience, we have to know that we have to keep on this topic. Uh, is there, is there, do you have any funny, do you have a funny moment that's shareable from your national team trips? Anything that's, mm. anything that, 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 that stands so out? Many, but also I, you know, my memory is not great because this is now we're talking like 20 years ago. Right? <laughs> um, There was a, a Pan Pacific's trip where Richard, um, oh God, why are you asking me to remember things? <laughs> I'll, I'll share a trip with you. Dennis, okay. per, Dennis Persley, uh, we, we were on a national team trip. This was in 87, this was before you. And we were in uh, Brisbane and Persley, and we had a week after the meet in Sydney. Like they, 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 we had flights back and it was like seven days later after the meet was over to save money. I guess the flights were cheaper. So national team director Dennis Persley is, is like traveling through Australia or going to Guam to look at a training camp. And we're there with sticks, Ron Ballatory. And it was seven days of way, way, way too much fun. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, but I do remember us walking down the street and I was just like, we look like gang of degenerates someone needs to stand up straight we're representing team usa but we had a lot of fun it was a good time yeah yeah uh so i think that one of my favorite like fun time memories was not actually a national team trip it was um doing the mare nostrum tour in um, europe and uh that was just yeah a lot of a lot of fun a lot of a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> we, well, I, I hear the subtext in your yeah, voice so there was something like so, um, and I know there's professional swimming in the U.S. now, which is awesome, but that was like you swim in a race, they hand you a wad of cash, um, and then you go spend it at the club. <laughs> that's cool. That's awesome. That's uh, that feels. Go to the beach and then go back the next day and race again. That was you fun. Know you know what's cool about you is that you you are you're an icon you're you know you have you have the title you have the the you got the data in your background you've achieved it all but you show back up you show back up at the olympics and uh despite having a busy life and what's it like going to an olympics after winning all of those medals like i'm i'm basically wallpaper but you're there and you're a star what's it like no pain you just get to be Jimmy well, I Thompson. Have to say, i i'm really sad i didn't get to go to 16 um, I went to 2008 and, um, and 2012 and, um, I have to say so watching is a lot more fun than going as an athlete, but, um, I mean, that might be bad to say, but no, you know, it's, it's not, it's the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I love I love sitting in the stands watching, uh, placing bets on who, you know what who's going to do what. That like I just feel so much excitement because I know where the athletes are at in their mind, and I, like all of the drama and everything, and just just being able to not have to deal with it, and just sit there and enjoy it. It's just it's really a wonderful. And then just being able to um, absorb all of the all of the different of you know all of the energy surrounding the whole Olympics and uh, walking around in the plazas and everything. So 2008, I was I was there just with friends, really. Um, I kind of went on my own. I ended up hanging out with like Gary Hall and um, and and Dave Arlock and some other um, folks, and just meeting a lot of new people. And that was that was really fun. And then 2012, by then I was married, and so my husband Dan came with me, and uh, I was like in my third trimester with my first son. Um, so I had this humongous belly. And um, it, was, it was a little hard to walk around, but I managed to, we, were, we had a wonderful time in London. So I, I don't know, I love, go, I, I sort of committed to going to every Olympics until I die. Um, and I didn't go in 16, because uh, my, my second son was only two months old. I thought that wouldn't be very responsible as a mom. So I didn't get to go to Rio. But uh, two, um, 2004 trials, USA Swimming did a great job taking us, uh, bumping everything up a notch for trials. Did you feel yeah. betrayed when you saw trials in Omaha? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, because it, it was it could, yeah. I mean, no, no, I don't want a bad mouth like Long Beach was where my last trials were. But yeah, Omaha does an amazing job. And actually, I love going to the trials almost as much as to watch is almost as much as I love going to Olympics to watch. It is quite the show. They really do an amazing job there. Yeah. Gotcha. We're, we're down to four minutes and it's a you're you have you've probably forgotten more about swimming than most people will ever know. Uh, do you have any advice for um, young kids who are on the path to swimming division one or swimming at the elite level? If there's like, hey, this is one thing you need to think about. I would say always be true to yourself and your values um, and don't be afraid to speak your mind. Um, and, um, also be, be a great teammate and give back to others. Always remember to, to show gratitude to the, the village that brought you to where you got and, um, and, um, and your family and your coaches and your teammates. I think that's super important and, um, never give up. Never give <laughs> up. What, okay. Oh, call, come on in and call me. Go ahead. So, so speaking of the village that raised you, I think we mentioned that, um, you know, you grew up swimming for Mike and Amy Parado, uh, in right. New Hampshire who, you know, they are now in Minnesota and they're yes. now coaching another, um, young female phenom in Reagan Smith, who's also heading yes. to Stanford. Yes. Um, can you, can you give us some insight into, you know, Mike Parado's done this, uh, what three decades apart? I mean, yeah, he he's been doing it for a while, and and he's produced a lot of great talent. Can you give us some insight into into what, you know, how, how he makes his athletes tick like he does? I just gotta say, Mike Prado is like top three, one of my favorite people in the world, and um, I can't talk about Mike without having a huge smile because I just love him so much. But Mike, um, he cares about his athletes like his children and he cares not only about how fast they swim but about how well they're doing in school about their mental health about their happiness um everything he, he like cares about people total package and he develops swimmers in a way that they will get better and better when they go to college um he always kept workouts super interesting um he always you know was very uh, focused on um goal setting and and um just it was it was we all were so excited to swim for my all the my teammates on seacoast um and he just he lives and breathes it he's just so he's he's relaxed but also so intense about swimming um and and it, it just brings energy to everyone around him so um you know i just i think that that's going to bring success wherever he goes. And he's, he's shown that, you know, it's not, it wasn't just me, it was him. And he's, you know, he's, I think he's had now, God, we were counting together. I think Reagan is maybe his fourth Stanford swimmer, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but I'm just so excited for him and, and disappointed about the, the coronavirus, how it's impacted 
um, um, you know, that his chances of being an Olympic coach potentially, because now we're going to be at Stanford. But um, yeah, I, it's just thrown a wrench in everything. But I was so grateful to be there when he got coach of the year and uh, present his award for that. It's so well-deserved. We're down to two minutes, and I just want to say thanks for your service. You're on the front lines as a doctor. And also, just as we leave, is there anybody that you're excited about watching, provided that we have an Olympics next year? Anyone you're, you have your eye on? <laughs> okay, Mel, I hadn't done my research yet on upcoming swimmers, so. Reagan Smith. Reagan Smith. Smith. <laughs> Reagan Smith. Okay. Reagan like Smith. I know very well. <laughs> Reagan, Reagan Smith works for our audience. She, okay. she, she, is, she is a towering star. But yeah. uh, you're so sweet to come on. Will you come on again? Of course. Anytime. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.